بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شراہلی صدری و یسر علی عمری واہل العقتم السانی یفق قولی السلام علیکم آئی ایم خدیجہ سلیم لیکچرر اینڈ کنسلٹنٹ اسپیچ اینڈ لینگویج پیتھالوجی ایٹ یونیورسٹی آف لاہور ایٹ دا ڈپارٹمنٹ آف ری ہیبلٹیشن سائنسز فیکلٹی آف ڈلائڈ ہیلتھ سائنسز آئی ہیو ڈن مائی بی ایس یونرس فرام چلڈرن ہاسپٹل اینڈ ماسٹرز فرام ریفا انٹرنیشنل یونیورسٹی آئی ایم بوتھ سرٹیفائڈ پیڈیاٹرک لینگویج اسمنٹ تھراپسٹ آئی ہیو بین ڈیلنگ کیز ود ڈفرینٹ ڈس آڈرز آف اسپیچ اینڈ لینگویج پیتھالوجی فرام دا پاسٹ سیون ایئرس ٹوڈے وی ہیو اے ویری انٹرسٹنگ ٹاپکس فار دا آڈینس دیٹ از ہاؤ ٹو اسیس امیٹیشن اینڈ ہاؤ کین وی پلان امیٹیشن امیٹیشن از اے پری وربل اسکل اینڈ اٹ ہیز ویری امپارٹنس ان اسپیچ تھراپی اینڈ اٹیننگ لینگویج دا آبجیکٹیوز آف ٹوڈے از پریزنٹیشن از ہاؤ کین دا اسٹوڈنٹس اسیس امیٹیشن اینڈ ہاؤ کین وی پلان تھراپی سو دیر آر ایٹ لیولس آف امیٹیشن بٹ ٹوڈے ان دس سیریز وی ول ڈسکس دا فور لیولس آف امیٹیشن Communication skills are the single best indicator of developmental performance in less than three years of age. It is a core deficit. If a children has a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorders or delays or social communication disorders or whatever disorders, there is a core deficit if the child is not attaining speech and language and that is imitation. And all lay talkers have one thing in common that is their imitation is delayed. When we address imitation as the core deficit, regardless of the diagnosis we often see more rapid success so the question is why imitation matters imitation matters because it has roles role in our language and it has sequence of imitation if we look at the no- normal development of a child from the newborn life we can see that some of the reflexes are instinct that is when the child sucks the milk from the mother it is reflexive and but some as the newborn grows and develops there is a vast majority of the cognitive social motor and communication skills that he she learns that are imitated actions and as these imitated actions become spontaneous true mastery skill is achieved and if we look at the normal development we see that infant earliest interactions with the mothers involve imitation For example, when the newborn copies the facial expressions of the mother, the vocalizations of the mother, the little coos and repeats the sounds, for example, moving the arms and the, and the vocalization when, the, when he hears the mom's voice. So all these actions are imitated actions. So imitation has a very important role if we look at the development of a child um, in the newborn life. And during these back and forth gazes, early conversations and infant begins and this is the long process of imitating another person and if we move forward if we move forward to 6 to 12 months imitation patterns we see that the ch- that the baby learns how to stack the blocks or operate a new toy and uh, it is very fun to watch the newborn um, the newborn and then it is very fun to watch the toddler imitating the peekaboo actions and the patty cake actions so these are all the important imitation skills a child has to learn so there is a question for all the audience uh, watching this video you can write your answer in the comment section that according to your experience according to your knowledge at what age imitation stops so we have like 10 seconds um you can write the answers in the comment section so i hope the 10 seconds are over and you have written your answer the quest the answer to this question is that at what age imitation stops it never stops till that you are imitating actions you are learning so this is how important this imitation skill is Watching and then copying his mother and, and significant others is how a child completes all rite of passage. So it is how the imitation is important. So there is another question coming your way. I hope you will answer this also. And again, we are going to have 10 seconds for you to write the answer of this question in the comment section. The question is, does imitation play a role in social development? Do you think that imitation plays a role in social development or not? So I'm going to wait here for 10 seconds and you can write the answer in the comment section. Okay, so let's answer this question. Does imitation play a role in social development? Yes, definitely. It has a very important role in social development. And let's see how this happens. 
So if we want to look at the roles of uh, imitation during early childhood, there is a learning function that all the new skills that we learn are imitated actions. And if we look at socialization, this is how, by imitation, uh, is how children first learn to interact with others. Imitation skill, from both social and learning perspective, it has important role in your learning and it has important role in your social development. So let's move on to our eight levels of imitation. And in this series, we're going to study the four levels of imitation. Level one. Level one is actions with objects. So what are we going to assess uh, during this level is how the child operates an object. Does the child know what to do with object? For example, if there is a container, does the child know how to place uh, the toys in the container and can he dump out the container, dump out the toys uh, from the container? If the child has blocks, does the toddler, one year old, two year old, three year old knows how to stack the blocks? And if you have a drum toy, does the child know how to pat the drum with your hand, with the, uh, with the uh, stick? And can the child knock at the, knock at the door or if there is a uh, baby doll and a spoon. So does the child know how to feed it with a spoon or wash it with a cloth or pat or kiss a doll? If you have a ball, does the child know the actions of a ball? For example, does he know how to throw it, how to roll it? And if he's not doing these actions and he's one year old or two year old and he's not performing these actions and he's just putting the ball in his mouth and doing mouthing and he does not know this concept, this means that his imitation is delayed. So we have to teach these kinds of actions to the child if you are planning for speech and language therapy. So if you have a phone, does the child put the phone uh, to his ears or not? Another very important thing in this level is this, that if you put a blanket over a toy, does the child put uh, away the blanket from a hidden toy? Does he have this cognition that he has to find something what is beneath the toy? So all these things come in level one, which is actions with objects. Moving on to level two. Level two is communicative gestures. As the name indicates, whatever gesture the child is performing, there is a communication. So we have to assess, we have to judge. Does the child perform these kind of gestures? So what kind of gestures will be there? There will be bye-bye. There will be head nodding. Uh, does, is he doing yes? Is he doing no? And uh, another very important communicative gesture is pointing. For example, if you ask him that where is your Baba? Where is your Mama? Is he pointing at his father or uh, at his mother? And another very important thing comes in communicative gestures is finger plays. Like twinkle, twinkle, little star or pat a cake or whatever songs that has gestures. For example, wheels on the bus go round and round. Can he imitate these actions or can he perform these actions or does he know these actions at a very early age of one year old, two year old, three year old? This is very important. If the child does not know these things until one year, until two year, this is a red flag and you have to work on his speech and language skills and communication skills. So level one was actions with objects. Level two was communicative gestures and level three is non-verbal actions with your face and mouth. So this involves your face and your mouth. So two main important things which are important for communication, which are important for learning communication is your face and your mouth. So from the face, what kind of gestures, what kind of actions we perform? That is laughing, that is crying. So you have to teach the child how to laugh. So you have to laugh in front of the child. You have to teach the child how to cry if he does not know these things. So you have to assess your child. If you are a parent, you can assess your child. If you are a therapist, you have to assess your child and then plan the therapy accordingly. So non-verbal actions with the face and mouth. Is he laughing? Does he know? For example, if you ask him that, can you do laughing action? He doesn't, he does not know. Then you have to teach him. Can you perform crying action? He does not know. You have to teach him. So you assess and then you plan therapy. And uh, then there's a very funny action that is very good, that really works well in therapy, that is puff out your cheeks and then uh, push the air out with your hands. So it is a very nice way to uh, help toddlers learn to imitate actions of your face. Second point of it was your mouth. So refine movements with your mouth. Refined movements with your mouth come with a smile. So you have to teach the child how to smile. You have to teach a child how to pout. 
stick your tongue out. So these are the kind of things that we used to play uh, with our children in their early childhood. But nowadays, these things are uh, removed because the child is busy with the laptop or the social media apps. So this, these are the things which were um, present in our past, but not for our children in this future. So we have to teach these things if they are missing. Then wiggle your tongue from side to side and click your tongue like this. I hope you heard the clicking noise so you can um, tell the, ther the therapist can tell the child, the parent can perform these kind of actions, pretend to lick the object and um, you can also move your lips round and you can perform all the actions which are the refined movements with your uh, mouth. So this is the level at which you can introduce mouth toys, the whistles, the bubble bottle blowing, the flutes, the horns, because this will help his motor movements to be refined so that he can develop speech and language uh, at the end. So here comes the last level. The last level is imitating vocalizations in play. So you, at this level, you have to teach him different vocalizations. So you have to perform this vocalization for the child. First, you will assess, does the child know these kinds of uh, vocalizations? And if not, then you have to perform these. And these include uh, fake laugh, fake cry, the car and truck noises, like the, noi the, the noises of uh, police car, the ambulance, siren noises, the drinking noise and um, the eating, the eat noise. For example, you can uh, perform these kind of actions with a child that how to eat the food and they can be a fake sneeze, they can be a fake laugh, they can be a fake cough. So you can perform these actions if you're planning for therapy. So you assess the child and you think that he has uh, limited abilities in imitating vocalizations in play. And these, were, these will be the children who will uh, be delayed. For example, if the child is three years old and his developmental and language level is two years old, then uh, this will be the area for which you will assess the child and for which you will plan therapy. And then there's a sleeping noise that you can teach the child that the, the baby is sleeping and you can teach these kind of uh, verbs and these kind of noises to the child. So these were the four levels of imitation and total there are eight levels, but today we discussed four levels of imitation. So at the end of this session, the students will be able to practically assess uh, imitation skills and they can plan goals for imitation development. These are the references of this today's uh, lecture. I hope this lecture was informative for you. Thank you.